So for um, number 69, we have uh, AN is equal to N times uh, R to the power of N. And they want us to decide for what values of R is this sequence convergent. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the, uh, the limit as N approaches infinity. So we're going to take the, the limit as n approaches infinity of our a n and see what happens. Well, if we take the limit, it's going to be equal to, I'm just going to break it down to two parts, the limit as n approaches infinity of n times the limit as um, n approaches infinity of r n. And now this r n, um, as it approaches as n approaches infinity, let's think about what happens if r is greater than 1. Well, if r is greater than 1, we're going to have a value greater than 1 to the power of infinity. So it's going to be that value multiplied over and over and over again. So say something like 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5 and so on. And so you can see that this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And so um, if if r is greater than 1, this is going to be, uh, this first limit as n approaches infinity is just infinity times uh, this limit here as uh, if r is greater than 1 to the power of infinity times infinity, that's infinity, um, so diverges, right? Um, okay, what, what, if, what if r is equal to 1? Well, if r is equal to 1, uh, this limit here, the first one, the limit as n approaches infinity of infinity, that is going to be infinity times uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 to the power of infinity. It doesn't matter um, if we take 1 and we raise it to whatever, it doesn't matter. This will still be 1, right? Um, so that one is infinity times 1, and so this is equal to infinity. And so... Um, this clearly diverges, right? So also diverges. Well, what if r is less than if r is less than one? Um, and I actually I should put the absolute value, uh, but we'll we'll just take if r is less than one. So if r is less than one, it means that uh, this first limit here it's going to go to infinity, right? But this second limit here, if r is less than 1, it's like we're taking, say, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 infinite times. So every single time, I am um, cutting whatever amount that I have into smaller and smaller bits, right? Because I'm multiplying by a number less than 1. So this other part is going to go to 0. And so this is going to be infinity times 0. And hey, this looks like the indeterminate form, right? Because... We don't know whether the infinity wins or whether the zero wins. We don't know that. Um, and so th this is indeterminate, which means that we have to work a little bit harder. And I'm going to just say that this is the absolute value of 1, because this is also the case if r is like negative 0 0.5, right, times negative 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5. We're going to see that this this is just going to um, this is just going to get us to a such a tiny number as it goes to infinity that it's going to be zero. Okay, so remember that we're at this point where this limit here is equal to infinity times zero. Okay, so this is indeterminate. And remember that we can use L'Hopital if it is indeterminate, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to represent it not using the sequence, but using the function. So the limit, so the limit as x approaches infinity of um, x times r to the power of x. And the reason that we did this is because with L'Hopital, we have to differentiate, right? And we can't really differentiate a sequence. But the good news is that um, the sequence, so if I have a random sequence here, uh, let's just take the sequence, say, 1 divided by n, and the function, compare it to the function 1 over x. Well, 1 over x is going to be this whole thing here. It's going to be continuous, right? Whereas 1 over n is just going to be at discrete points. It's going to be these points right here. And so we can see that the, the sequence and the, um, the function, they head to the same place. Because they behave in the same manner, the only difference is that the sequence um, is a bunch of points, right, at the natural numbers, whereas the function, it is continuous. It takes every single value. But we can see here that they behave the same way. Um, they're heading to the same point. Okay. 
So if they're heading to the same point, we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the function. Now this is still infinity times zero when we take this limit, um, and to get it to L'Hopital form, we need it either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this is the limit as x approaches infinity of x divided by r to the minus x. And I haven't changed this because uh, if I put it on the denominator, it becomes negative, right? This is still the same thing as x over uh, as x times um, r to the power of x. So I've just put this in the denominator with a negative exponent, but I have not changed the meaning. So now when we take this limit, um, on the top it's going to be, uh, and actually let me let me just that's one over r to the power of x. Okay. And so when we take this limit here, the one on the top is just going to be infinity, right? And on the bottom, we have 1 divided by, uh, remember that this limit here is 0. So this guy over here goes to 0, right? Because r is less than 1. Um, so if this guy goes to 0, then 1 divided by 0 is infinity. So this is going to be infinity over infinity. Hey, that works. That is um, that is L'Hopital form. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use... We're going to use L'Hopital. So we're going to differentiate the guy on top and we're going to differentiate um, the guy on the bottom. So um, the guy on top is going to be the derivative of x is just 1, right, over the derivative of 1 over our x. Um, so if we, if we take this, um, this derivative here, and actually, I'm going to, um, yeah, if we take this derivative, it's going to be low d high minus high d low, right? So that's going to be r, uh, r 2x, so low d high, uh, that is going to be the derivative of rx times 1, so that times the derivative of 1, which goes to 0, and then minus the derivative of r to the power of x, which is uh, minus rx times ln ln r. That is the uh, that is the derivative of the one on the bottom. So this is going to be equal to. Um, let's see. We are going to to improve this. So over here we're dividing by a division. So this is the same thing as going r to the power of two x uh, over minus r x uh, times ln r, and this is equal to just. Um, rx times rx over minus rx ln r, and then this is equal to one of these cancel out. It's just rx divided by um, minus ln minus ln r. Okay. So once we have this, when we take this limit over here, let's see uh, what this is going to look like. So when we take the limit as x approaches infinity, of um, rx over minus ln r. Well, think about this. ln r, r is a number that's less than, uh, that is less than one, right? So, um, actually, I'm going to, to just pull this outside. It's going to be minus one over ln r times rx, yeah. Okay, so this limit here, minus 1 over ln r, this is just going to be a constant, because r is a constant, but r to the power of x, r to the power of x, remember that this limit tends to 0, right? Because r is less than 1. So if r is less than 1, any number less than 1 to the power of infinity, that's going to be 0. So this limit here is going to be, um, this limit here is going to be 0. So what we've done here is we've shown that the only possible way that this function here can converge, not this function, the sequence, is if r is less than 1. Because if it's r is less than 1, um, we can use L'Hopital. And if we use L'Hopital, we differentiate it, and um, this limit here, it goes to 0. If r is equal to 1 or greater than 1, um, this won't work because the limit here will just be infinity. And so we can say here that... Um, n times r to the power of n converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And that is it for number 68.